Okay, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Broken Geek and in today's video, we're going to be continuing from where we left off in the previous video and continue with our base design module and in particular today we'll be looking at the bending schedule tab where we can automatically generate a bending schedule depending on the design and analysis that we did in the previous sections. So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so first things first, you need to remember we did a design or we inputted a design based on one of our layouts in AutoCAD. And what we did in the first video when we came to column based design, we looked at how to input uh, the designs into the module. Also, we looked at the theory and a bit of other things as well. And we also clarified in the second video about 1.4 and 0.9. And then we moved on to the base design where we looked at what edge output means and what you should expect from this output in the previous we also looked that if anything is in red then therefore that means your design is not good and you need to go back to input and change everything that is there now the first thing that we need to do is just click on bend and shade you for this video and this is the title or the screen that you are greeted with now remember this is comes after you've done the input and the design and also even the calc sheets and now you want to bend the schedule. So this section allows you to automatically generate a bending schedule and also to view how it would look out on site. So to do that, maybe just to quickly get your interest, you can view how the base will actually look by, by clicking on 3D and you can hold down shift and the mouse and start rotating it using the mouse wheel as you can see and this gives you a view of what it will look like. Now. And let's go back and switch from 3D and go back to plan view or 2D view. Now that we're back in 2D view, what you can do or the first thing that we need to look at is the bending shadows parameter table. And this is where you can get the main reinforcement as suggested by program, but you can also just enter what you want. So in this case, for example, it tells us the bottom X direction still is Y16 A300, but you can specifically change this to whatever you want. Remember, the minimum bar is supposed to be a Y10 and you can try and put this at Y20. So unfortunately, as it tells you, it suggests that you should put six, 670 square millimeters per meter. And if you put Y10s at 200, that does not work. So you can play around and change. In this case, let's try Y12s at 200. Still does not work. What we can do is Y12s at 250. Still does not work. So let's see. Y12s at 150. That would work. But then that would mean your spacing would be... 150 and you would need 7 y12s as opposed to using 4 y16s this could be a good design given that you have more of your bars underneath the column which is what you would want to do so just remember you can use the suggested rebar or you can enter your own rebar depending on what you want to do and when it comes to the actual design i have a separate tutorial which i showed you how to design a foundation base and also some of the considerations that we look at when we're designing the basis so for that tutorial please click on the link in the description below or above and you'll be good to be sorted if you don't find it above just click in the link in the description below now having talked about the suggested and entered ripper one thing we also need to look at is the rebar table now you see when i was put in this bars it has a suggested and has entered then has required then has nominal so as you can see the required is very low but by design standards everything Back when people were still figuring out what and how to do, they, they came around to consensus that even though, even if you're not going to have any loads or even if the required reinforcement is zero, there is always going to be what we call the nominal still, especially when it comes to the bottom face. In this case, you are definitely going to need something in the bottom face and it's telling you the nominal reinforcement that you need to put is 650. Now, for the top, you can get away with it, but as you can see, it's suggesting zero for the top. But for the bottom, it's suggesting 670. And then the reason why is because 670 is greater than the nominal still, which is 650. So that is why it's telling you to put a 670. Now, you can achieve 670 depending on whatever bars you use and depending on the different spaces. So all you have to do is play around with this and see what you would want to do. But if you want to use the suggested rebar, all you have to do is just click on suggested rebar, then it will demount and you have the suggested bars and there you have it you have the entered steel which is greater than nominal and required still so in the case that you enter steel that is too too little or less than what is required it will always have it in red so in this case you have it as 335 which will be a failure so you will need to put 
whatever you have at Y16s at 300. So I think this is it. We have covered the main two tables, right? The pending schedules parameters in the rebar table. And by now, you might have an understanding of how these tables actually work. You can play around with them. So just remember, this table allows you to play around with the bars so that you can get the configuration that you want. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next table, which is table three, which is the column parameters table. Now, this table has two sections, one for column one and one for column two. So in the case you have two columns, both columns will have data. But in this case, we only have one column. So we're going to have data in only one section. In this case, that is column one. Now, as you can see, the bars, it has the section that says bars, which is suggested in entered. And now it's telling you the main bars, which are going to be your column starters. It is suggesting four Y16s, but in the case, you can change it. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is to verify if the bars are okay, depending on the column design module, which is this module. So you have to use these two modules in conjunction just to check if the four Y16s or you need four Y12s. But generally one note that I want to tell you when it comes to the code, your starter bars do not have to be the exact diameter as your column bars. So you can always use a diameter that's actually less because in fact, when you have the starters and they're lapping with the column bars, you always have more steel than what is required in the column design. So you'll be safe. So you can always use four white curves as a beginner for any type of column. But if you want to increase the lap, you can always then increase it depending on what you get on the column design module. Next. What you're going to have is in this case, it's telling you that you have the main bar. So remember, whenever you detail, if we go to section, let's say section core one, the main bars are the bars that will always be in the corners, right? This is what I change when I change to four Y16s, as you can see, these are the doors that increase. But in the case, maybe you have a different column. Uh, for example, a column that pa goes past 300, you might want to have some bars in so some of the faces. So what you can do is you can say two Y12s, right? In this case, let me show you what happens. As you can see, you have added two new bars. In this case as well, if you say two white curves, let me just show you what happens. There it goes. You have two new bars that show up in the face. So instead of having four bars as for starters, you now have eight bars for starters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then that is all up to you. But to be honest with you, you only need starters in the corners. You don't you really need any starters in the middle faces. Now, the next thing that goes all program asks you to enter is the column type. So in this case, they stop. And when you change it to stop, I think I want you to check at the section. This is what you get, right? Your bars go off and kink at the top. In this case, they close off. Let me just show you. This is what it does. But if you change this to column, then the column continues and your bars will go up. And then you can also say none, but then this just means you won't have any bars in your column. So the best thing when you're designing for a column or column status, what you always want to do is pick column. Then the next thing after picking column, what it's going to do, obviously, is it's going to ask you the lap length factor. Now, the lap length factor is a cool thing. All you have to understand is you need to go to the annex of whatever code you're using. If you're using SABS, you go to annex D and it will tell you the length that you need to provide if you're using columns that are experiencing actual or you want bars in compression or for different type of grades of steel. So this will change depending on what grade you use it. It may be 55 for some, 45 for some. So it just depends on what grade you're using. So pick, pick the appropriate lap length factor depending on what you have. So remember the lap length factor is always a number multiplied by the diameter of the bars that you have. So always refer to the code you're using. If it's ACI, IS, BS, CP, or even SABS 101 from the motherland. Next, what will happen is it will ask you to enter the diameter of the links. So the links that you're going to provide for now will be fixing links. So diameter eight will always work. You don't really have to worry about this because they're going to take these links off before they put the next cage. You will do the actual design for the links in another setup or when you're designing for the column. And you don't even have to worry about this when you're still dealing with uh, the base status. Next, the thing you need to worry about is the width of the link. This is automatically calculated for you using the program. All it does is it looks at either dimensions of your column and the cover to the columns. In this case, once you change the cover, you will see the shape code of the links as well is supposed to change. That is, if you go back to calculation sheets and you go to bending, it's supposed to change depending on what you say the cover to your columns is, right? So you can always go back, regenerate PS defaults, and you can always change the cover to your links. But what by default, it calculates the cover using 
column cover of 30 and that's why it gives you 240 in one direction and 170 in one direction because this is 300 minus 60 for 30 30 and this gives you 240 and this one is 230 subtract 60 gives you 170 and that is from coming from the cover of 30 to columns so by default whatever it does is it will always design with 75 50 50 50 but you can change this by going back changing the user preferences which we talked about in another video which you can find in the link below or above so please see that if you want clarity on this issue next what you have is the number of links and this one by default you can use three that is the one that is mostly used but then this will depend on the length of your status so if the longer the length you may also want to use more links so you can always specify in this in this case if you change to four and if you go to the if you see you have four more links but like i said as you see now some of my links are in the a or are not connected to anything because it's not necessary so that is all independent upon yourself now after you've done that you can also change the name of your column so in this case it's saying co co1 what i could want to do is i could want to name the c3 and as you can see when you go through the screen it now says section c3 and plan it gives you a c3 on top next the next thing that you see is you have the cover to the bottom cover to the sides and cover to the top cover to the columns first bar mark and base ps what you want the bending shade you found him to be so this is self-explanatory and you can change this in user preferences i've just talked about that but for the bar mark you can always change it in this case watch when i change it from a to one when you go back to the side it now says 4 y 16 or one at a spacing of 300 and this is going to be in the layer b2 if i want to change it to something else i could say s now it says s t w and then it goes so it all depends all you want to do is create a system for not naming your first bar marks, check with your code what it says are the ways you should be creating your bar marks, and you'll be able to use that in the same method as this module. Now, the next thing that you would want is the bending file shade you file name. In this case, do you want it to be called base BS? I personally don't want it to be called base BS. What I'm just going to say, this is going to be base A, right? Because this is the face base that we designed. Or what we can say is just let's call it base O1. Base O1. So that we remember this is the first base that we designed in the first tutorial if we're going to design any other base we're going to call it base 02. now last but not least and you go to the bottom you have the top bars configuration and the bottom bars configuration so this is where you can choose the which shape code of bars that you want to use so by default it says the top bars will be 52s and the bottom bars will be shape code 35 or 38 and this is how they look like so if you want to change how it looks you can change in this case from shape code 35 or 38 to shape code 34 or 37. This is how it will be looking like. Then you can go even to shape code 55. This is how you want your bars to look like. And in 3D, let me just show you how this would look, right? And if you can change the shape code 34, this is how it would look, right? You'll be there will be alternating bars in reverse, right? If you want shape code 60, this is how it will look. Some of them will look like. Remember, shape code 60 is for links. If you want a video that describes shape code links. Also click on the link in the description below, which will show you or take you to where you have, where I have a video which talks about bar bending schedules and also how to detail depending on the shape codes. Now, and also last but not least, you could have shape codes in the Y direction and bar mark 38 in the different directions. So remember, the configuration is all up to you and all up to the code that you use and what you think would be best would work on site. Normally, I would say shape code 55 is a very good bar that you would want to use as this allows for a large anchorage. That is in the case where you have huge, huge forces. But in a case where you don't have huge forces, you can go with shape code 35 or 38. And as for the top bars, we will look more into this when we have a situation where we need the top bars. Now, once everything is done like this and you're done, you've set everything that you would want. The next step which you would want to do is... Just select which picture size you want for your bending shade. Do you want it to be A4 or A5? I usually stick to A5. And then once you're done, all you have to do is remember file, save your file, then generate the shade. So normally, this doesn't take too much time when you have a full license. But when you don't have a license, it might take its time and take its time to link with the uh, pads interface. But what it will be doing is it's generating an automated pads or an automated bending shade for you that you can later on edit and play around with in pairs to change the length of the bars bar mark and the presentation and also create a nice bending schedule or title blog that i've shown you in previous videos if you want to see this in other videos please click on the links below now it's saying the bending schedule cannot be created but if you check in the bottom there 
right? This is the thing when you don't have a full vision, the interlink between your programs will be limited. But just to check, just to check, we might go to desktop, right? And we might go to Procon. And in this case, we might try and see if we do have a bandage schedule. So there we have it has been generated, but unfortunately for us, it was not able to pop up because we don't have a full license. And obviously, this program, since we don't have a full license, we don't get all the updates that we come in, in and everything else. Also, please do ignore activate Windows. We will activate it when we're done making all shooting these tutorials. So we're still waiting for the base to come up. And in this case, there it is. There is the fully generated schedule from uh, Procon using the suggested bars. So what we'll do is we obviously going to have a series or we have a series that we're doing on pads. You can see how you can then edit this for yourself. Or if you want, click the other links in the description. We'll take you to other videos where I've edited um, foundations before, pad footings, and you can get a grasp of how to use pads because P Procon, the design suite is on its own and this can also be considered to be on its own. So we're doing it in depth because this one requires a whole new setup of tools and understanding before you can use it. So without wasting too much time, we're going to wrap up the video at this point. Next, what we're going to do is just to solidify our knowledge when it comes to design a basis. We are now going to design a base that is not centered on the, the a column rather, or a base that does not have a column that is centered on its center, but which is in one of its extremities. So we can design two or we can design three. We'll see, or you can design one. It's all up to us. But thank you very much for tuning in. This has been tutorial 12. Now we're going to move on and we're going to see you in the next episode, which will be tutorial 13. And hopefully we continue learning Procon easily and you're understanding something. If you're not getting anything, please leave a comment, leave a like, and just leave a shout out and we can see what we can do. So until next time, Keep safe and don't sneeze.